Hi, JP Fournier of the Movie Jerks here, bringing you some more random reviews. Now, if you are a bit like me, uh, you may get overwhelmed by the amount of content that is available. Uh, there's so many streaming sites, and each streaming site have hundreds and hundreds of films to look through. I spend more time looking through movies than I do watching the actual film. Uh, I can get lost for two or three hours just shuffling through what's available. So to avoid that, what I have done is I have compiled a list of over 2,500 of the movies I have not watched yet. Well, some I may have, I just may have forgot about them. But what I will do is I will just give a spin, press the poster button, and the next four movies that come up are the four films I have to watch this week. So, oh, we got one. Uh, we have The Eves. Uh, the Devil's Hand. Terror in the Jungle. These are all seem to be horror. And The Specialist. Okay. So, these are the four movies I will be reviewing this week. La 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 la, movie jerks. The Eves. The Eves starts off like most horror films, with a vague prologue advertising that something sinister is just around the corner. Then we get a group of sex-driven teens traveling to some remote area where they will naturally fall victim to an unknown assailant. We spend time hearing them gossip about each other, tease each other and annoy each other, we see the boys walk through an abandoned church while they gossip. Then we watch the women pee together while they gossip. Then we end up watching them argue and bicker instead of partying. And after 45 minutes, the film finally does something that is slightly entertaining. And for the next 45 minutes, it's pretty much standard slasher horror film. With a few people being knocked off here and there, leading the group to a big reveal and a violent climax. Now this isn't high class cinema by no means, but for horror fans, it may just feel like an appetizer before a main meal. It has decent enough blood effects, the villains are despicable, primarily because the acting's bad, and the story stays relatively grounded in reality to not break any suspension of disbelief. The scariest part of the film is when the teenagers look outside to see who is attacking them. When they look through the window, it is purely nighttime. However, when we see the other side, there is clearly sunlight beaming down on them. What kind of weird vortex is this? It is the last 15 minutes that horror fans will probably enjoy. But for everyone else, you're not missing much. The Devil's Hand. There is no literal devil's hand like the poster would suggest. We unfortunately do not get to see a devil's hand strike with savage fury, killing all those that cross its path. Instead, we witness our main character, Frank, dreaming about a specific blonde woman. He later finds a doll that looks exactly like this blonde woman. and another doll that looks like his current girlfriend. Frank then meets this dream lady, only to find out that she has a shrine with a doll that looks like him. No matter how and yet Frank sees nothing out of the ordinary about this situation. She even admits to being a witch. What are you? Don't you know? You're a she-doll. A witch? You're evil, but beautiful, fascinating. Yet Frank is still not phased. So she takes him to a satanic cult where they watch people dance, then perform a near murder. <coughs> Frank still doesn't see anything particularly wrong with this as he still hasn't gotten laid yet. His current girlfriend, who we met at the beginning of the film, after her date with a duck. Who are your friends? My date for the afternoon. Suddenly falls ill to a pain in her chest, which Frank finds out is caused by a voodoo doll with a pin in the chest. But this doesn't persuade our protagonist from staying on his trek for booty. 
The Devil's Hand is only 71 minutes. However, it feels like two hours, with plenty of scenes dedicated to watching rituals, engaging in conversations that lead to nowhere, and our supposed hero never figuring out that a satanic cult might be a bad thing. Is that all? What makes the film somewhat fun to watch is seeing how many red flags come up that Frank can ignore and stick to his path to having sex with a lady who's way out of his league. But will he come to his senses in time to rescue his current girlfriend from being the next cult sacrifice? The whole time I kept telling myself, oh that poor lady, she shouldn't have stopped dating that duck. Terror in the Jungle Terror in the Jungle starts off with a little boy waving goodbye to his friend the duck. We never see this duck again, which means that this film missed an opportunity of having a buddy duck film. The little boy is told by his father he's going to be flying to see his mother, but all by himself. Which leads us to an airplane boarding scene that lasts 10 minutes. This scene gives us the opportunity to learn our new characters. We get to meet a widower that supposedly has cashed in on her ex-spouse's death. A wannabe actress trying to make it in showbiz. A Beatles band knockoff. Nuns carrying a dead body in a casket. And our flight attendants. The film then gives us more characterization, taking time to set up each person's storyline. The actor starts to get acquainted with a charming, handsome man. The nun pisses off the widower. And the band gets recognized, giving them an opportunity to pull out their instruments, which they never stored in the baggages. The plane somehow was not refueled, so the pilots command the passengers to throw out all the wasted weight to lose weight and maintain altitude longer. What you're really saying is we're going to crash. This allows this scene to happen. No, it's all right. I can it myself. You help the others. Our pilots then perform a water landing. To save the little boy, they place him in a coffin and then float him down the river. From there, the passengers watch. Each individual jump into the water and get eaten up by crocodiles, only to decide to jump in themselves, killing everyone but the little kid. And after that 30 minute setup, terror in the jungle begins. For the last hour of the film, I kept wondering, am I watching a crime? As the film became a survival horror, but only with a five-year-old. What makes the film even more disturbing is that the child appears to have no stunt double. So when this kid is in jeopardy, he really appears to be in jeopardy. From crawling through muddy water amongst pointy branches being ruffled up by multiple tribesmen, being sacrificed a couple of times, to avoiding snakes, to avoiding crocodiles, to being hunted by a murderous psychopath, and to getting stuck in quicksand while another snake is hunting him down. It is hard to watch this young boy go through so much turmoil. The director even had a tribal actor sneak up on the poor kid and scare him for real just to get an authentic shot. Most of the film is dedicated to showing the kid crying his eyes out because he is so scared. So in the end, is the child okay? Well, he does get rescued at the end of the film. As for whether he's okay... Uh, I can't seem to answer that for the character or no the actor. I myself was a bit mentally broken at the end of this film. The Specialist A small-time crime lord who has the monopoly of a small town in the palm of his hands is getting sued by a new young lawyer who cannot be bought. So the crime lord hires The Specialist to take out this young whippersnapper. 
And what is she a specialist in? Well, getting horny men to want to have sex with her. And she is so good that she has men wanting to have sex with her even when she's not trying. It's like she's a regular, attractive lady. And that's basically this film. We watch one loser after another loser trying to have sex with her, all while she is hired to be put on the jury so she can have sex with a young lawyer only to get him disbarred. When the young lawyer is photographed with the lady on the beach, he spends the rest of the film trying to prove he was framed. Got the wrong house. So in the end, this film is about a married man that is caught having sexual encounters with an attractive lady that's not his wife, who happens to be in the jury of the court case that he is a lawyer for, and then tries to prove that he's innocent. <sighs> I cannot find words to tell you how suspenseful the specialist turned out to be. And there you have it, four more random reviews. If you've watched any of these films and have some comments, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. For more information about The Movie Jerks, you can go to www.themoviejerks.ca. La 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 la, Movie Jerks.